Hello everybody and welcome to Pignet. If you're not familiar with my channel, nice to meet you. My name is Jessie. Every week I upload videos consisting of speed drawings, art vlogs, and a sprinkling of tutorials. So if you're interested, or if you just want a fellow art buddy, subscribe today to stay in the loop. This is episode 2 of my watercolor series. I'm documenting my experience as I learn how to watercolor, and I'm sharing what I learn as I go. If you'd like to see the first video in this series where I paint a sea lion, I'm going to link that in the description box below, and I'll also put a card right about now. Some of my Snapchat followers may have known, but I don't think anybody else knew that I was actually out of town for the last week. My grandma had planned a visit to see my mom, who lives in Rapid City, South Dakota, and I decided to surprise her by showing up with my grandma. And it worked like a charm, but that's why I couldn't say beforehand, like, oh, I'm going to be out of town because my mom actually watches a lot of my videos, so I didn't want to spoil the surprise, you know what I mean? And I did take a lot of footage from the trip. My original plan was to mix it in with a lot of the video footage from this painting video, but the more I look at, like, what I filmed, the more I realize I think I might need to do a separate video altogether that might just be talking about the trip. I'm not 100% sure if I want to go through with it actually, but I'm thinking about it, so if you're interested, let me know in the comment section below. That might encourage me to do it because I'm kind of like on the fence, I guess. I probably will still have a couple of clips mixed in here and there in this video. I just didn't want to interrupt the painting too much because I don't know about you, but I find painting videos like watercolor painting videos particularly satisfying when you watch them as a speed paint and I think it's like it's like something about watching the paint soak in and spread into the paper this time around I wanted to work on flat washes and practice not using so much water so before I started the final painting I just did a couple of exercises to basically practice making flat washes and gradients in flat washes while avoiding and maneuvering around um, some big shapes that I drew. So I recommend that if you've never done that before. I thought it was fun. I kind of got a, a feel for how to make the gradients in particular. That was something I was worried about and I found it a little challenging, but I'm kind of getting the hang of it, I think. In my last video, I had asked all of you for advice on if you could think of one thing that you wish you had told yourself when you were first learning to watercolor. And a lot of people said that a big thing is not using too much water, so I really wanted to practice not using too much water. And one person in particular, I'm going to do an overlay of the comment, said just use a damp brush to blend. You don't need any more water. And that really resonated with me because I, I just was like, oh. I think I assume that once it's soaked into the paper, like, that's it, it's done, but really you have a little more time to work with it than I thought. So thank you to that person who left that comment because that one really stuck with me and I'm really glad that I asked all of you for your comments because I just really appreciate when I get comments in general, so that was a good one. Just working on these, the first exercises alone and working on my final drawing, I learned my first new tidbit of information about watercolor. Watch where you lay your hands. I have a bad habit of holding my paintbrush, kind of like I'd hold a regular drawing utensil. So eventually I'd get kind of lazy and let my hand rest on the paper or try to anchor it to get a smoother line and the paper would be wet. Do I need to say more? Luckily, when you do pick up paint on your hand, as I did a couple of times, and you might see this throughout the video, at least the paint is still wet so you can still kind of push it around and fix that spot that you might mess up. Be careful, because I feel like that could cause a disaster, and I, I'm, I already know what's going to happen. It's just something I have to like try to remind myself, like watch where you lay your hands, don't lay them in the wet paint. Huda. The second thing I learned this time around is that cold pressed paper is thirsty. The first exercises that I did are in a watercolor sketchbook that is 135 pound cold pressed paper. But the paper that I used in the final one, it was my mom's paper and it was much heavier. 
and much more textured. So when I was doing the washes, I had to lay down a lot more paint than I thought I'd have to. So that was just something I had to get used to, but I didn't realize, like, it's, it's common sense. The more texture and the thicker the paper is, the more it's going to drink up. I guess I just need to remember to be mindful, like, don't make a tiny little puddle of paint if I'm going to need a lot more, you know what I mean? So I had mentioned before that my mom is a watercolor artist. So I knew when I came in to visit her in South Dakota, I wanted to have a chance to work with her in her little studio. Their house is on top of like a cliff, basically. I'm, I don't know if it would be considered a hill, you know, I don't know. I don't know the rules on that. But I believe the area that their house overlooks is called Dark Valley. Mom, if you're watching this, and you might be, correct me if I'm wrong, Dark Valley? Is that right? Is that a thing, guys? Either way, I really don't think pictures do the view justice, but I'm hoping that my camera will be able to. The view from her studio is of Dark Valley, so you can, it's like you're sitting and it had wonderful lighting for filming. I was sitting right in front of this big window that overlooked that view and got all sorts of natural light that was perfect for filming. We just listened to a podcast and she was showing me a couple of different little tips and I might include a little clip here of her explaining um, one of the things. It's not really scientific. Just get a lot of paint Ooh, going. girl, watch out for my designer jeans. <laughs> and you're gonna tilt it? Um, not yet. I'm gonna put some other colors in. I'm gonna get the other colors to run in. Meanwhile, I'm over here like slowly toiling away. Well, these washes are where quick. But it's the rest of it that kind of is more painstaking. But actually, this should be a quick study. So maybe put a little bit more like that. And then we're going to come in with, and this will all run down because we're going to run it down and up. Let's see what happens when we start tilting a little bit. Wow. Nicole. Bob Ross makes over a big here. old mess on the, on the desk. You got to just get over that. So I think that just being in Rapid City and being in this hilly area with these pine trees all over and I'm on this house that's on top of a hill, do you get the vibe of where I was going with this painting, like my inspiration for it? You see? You see where I came from? I wanted to keep it simple. That's one thing I wanted for sure was to keep it simple because I didn't want to overwhelm myself and I knew I was only going to have a little bit of time to work on this. But this was the first watercolor I've done in a long time, maybe ever, that I'm happy with the results. Hopefully I will just continue to improve and learn new things, and hopefully you'll see that improvement, and it'll be interesting to watch, you know what I mean? But for now, I'm going to leave you here. If you're enjoying this series, and you like this video, let me know by giving this video a thumbs up. Subscribe if you want to see more. And leave a comment below letting me know, have you ever traveled out of your area, and if so, where's the last place you visited? And if you happen to be watching from South Dakota, I hope you'll say hello in the comments and let me know, because I think that'd be cool. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.